<laughs> Hello and welcome to the October 3rd, 2023 Select Board meeting. The entire board is present, town manager, town clerk, various members of the public and organizations. Let us stand for the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from September 19th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Set. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Right. There we go. Yes, you were here. You were here by Zoom. Now, right? Yes, I <laughs> was. Yes, All right. Um, first public comment. Yes. Please step up. Sure. State your name and address for the record, please. Hello. I'm Sarah Ellis. I live at Thank 98 you. Old Pine Hill Road. I've lived here for 18 years plus, and I'm here to cons uh, speak about concerns about a proposed um, development on Norman Court, and there are some other people here who also are here to express their concerns as well. I've provided a document. It's about 11 pages. I'll talk about it, and there are, there are some figures, um, and uh, I guess I'll get started. We, the, this proposed development is on um, Norman Court. There's about an 18-acre parcel, and they're, going to, they're planning to put in um, three six-unit apartment buildings and a single-family lot on Norman Court um, between Old Pine Hill and Coffin Brook. And the overall site plan is provided in Figure 1, page, which is on page 4 of your, of your handout. Just gives you an idea that most of the development is going to be up front. The single-family lot will be on Lot 1, which is indicated there, past an existing house. And then Lot 2 is where the three apartment buildings are proposed. Um, lot 1 is in R1. Lot 2 and the proposed apartment buildings are in Zone R2. And these, these diagrams are hard to read, but of course the full pack package is available on the planning board pages. Um, the planning board first held its first uh, public hearing on September 21. Um, four abutters expressed concerns about the development. One abutter supported it, and uh, some of us are here. Those of us who uh, expressed our concerns are also here today. Um, I have lots of concerns about it, but I'm just going to look at, just point out four of them for you. Um, first of all, the idea of the putting six unit the apartment buildings are going to be three buildings, three stories tall, with two units on each story, um, and they're going to be 900 square feet each unit. So uh, nine apart. So uh, yeah, six units in three buildings, 18, 18 units altogether. Um, the fact that they were going to be three stories was surprising to me, and I drove around. Uh, extensively through R2, couldn't find any three-story apartment buildings anywhere else, except not in R2. Yes, there are three-story buildings in R1, there are three-story buildings in the Village Overlay District, and that's where this type of dense development makes sense. Um, and this, this developer has also said he's already built a three-story built apartment building, but it was in Zone 1, R1, it's on Old Pine Hill South. And it's built into a hill, and it's only two stories above grade. So um, we're just, I think most, most of us are against the idea of having three stories there. Um, so it should be limited to either two-story family homes, which is more common in the area, or if it's going to be a multifamily building, we prefer <laughs> limited to two stories. And that would be consistent with other things that are mentioned in the, on the page, that page. So... My second, second comment is about um, the, the development plan, which was presented, doesn't account for species of concern. Um, the application, which was in the 921 packet, it, it shows two letters from an earlier version of this um, proposal. And the two letters are, I put them in on page five, and well, first of all, the two letters are from Maine Department of Inland Fish and Wildlife and Maine Natural Areas Program. 
And what they claim in their response is that the attached letters say there's nothing to worry about. There's no significant wildlife habitat or species. But if you actually read the letters, what they say is we do not know of any documented species of concern, but we recommend surveys. And the, both letters recommend surveys for spice bush, which is the, the spice bush, which is uh, the host plant for the rare spice bush swallowtail butterfly. So they did not do the surveys that I'm aware of. And one neighbor and I walked on the property the other day. It's not supposed to say don't. We located spice bush plants. So surveys were recommended. There are spice bush there. The surveys haven't been done, so we really think that official plants. I'm going to have to. Yep. Uh, how long? Stop you there. Uh, Too long? Uh, yes. Oh, um, it's three minutes? So, uh, or something? Four. Or how long? Um, but uh, if okay. other people wish to speak, if you sure. want to continue speaking at the second public comment, you can. Okay, I appreciate but, uh, that. if anybody else wants to speak, they need to have Thank you. I didn't off. actually know what the limit was. Appreciate it. No Thank problem. You. Thank you. Speaking of spice bush. bush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the spice bush girl. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Tanubial Sampson, and I live at 112 Little Pine Hill Road which I'm not in a butter, I'm a little further down. Um, I've lived here in town for about 20 years, I think. My mom owned the house before me, she bought it in 83. So we've been on the road for a while. Um, so I was just right, I'll try to just read this quickly. Um, just a list of my concerns. One, the proposed site is quite wet with an unnamed stream going through the middle of the building area. I, I suspect this area has a year-round seep due to the established flora. Mosses, alders, millberry, and winterberry are some of the plants found in this area. An aster that appears to be swamp aster is growing in the area designated to become the widened two-lane road. These plants range from FACW, which is facultative wetland, and OBL, which is obligate wetland. And I don't think the current mapping of the wetland is accurate and that it should be surveyed by MDEP to determine the actual square footage area of the wetlands that will be impacted. Two, I was with Sarah the other day, and a surprising amount of Lindera benzoin, the spice bush seedlings and young trees are scattered through both plot one and plot two, and she said it's a species of special concern. In Maine, with about 14 to 15 native populations in the entire state, and most of them are here in York County, it's the only food source for the spice bush swallowtail, which is endangered here. And I know that this butterfly is in the vicinity because I have the caterpillars in my yard, and I live maybe a thousand feet away from where this is happening. So I have confirmed caterpillars growing in the area. Um, my other concern was the invasive species that are on Norman Court. There's autumn olive and Japanese knotweed are both prevalent. They're both on the prohibitive list in Maine, and I didn't see anywhere in the plans the contractor discussing any way of mitigating these or preventing the spread of these plants. And not which is particularly bad. I'm sure most of you are aware of Japanese. Yeah, and it's expensive too. Like if it gets into places and can ultimately cost the town a lot of money if it gets into our ditches and et cetera, public areas. And my last concern was the additional volume of cars on Old Pine Hill Road and Sullivan Street. So as it is, the cars go higher than the speed limit, pass on the double line, tailgate, and generally display aggressive behavior. I'm sure you've heard these complaints. Um, it's used as a shortcut by people to avoid downtown. It's also a road that is narrow with deep ditches. There are dog walkers, joggers, children on bikes. The recent apartment building that was, has added a lot of children to the area, and they did put up a sign saying children playing, but the speed limit hasn't been reduced. And I really think that the speed limit should be down to 25, particularly with the library there, too. Um, but with the additional traffic, with Norman Court being directly across the street from Sullivan Street, they'll probably see more traffic, too. And I just sort of generally, I'm, I don't know why it wasn't reduced to 25 miles per hour when the redistricting was done and Old Pine Hill was put into the urban area. You know, I think it's one of the only roads in the urban area that's, tw that's 35 miles per hour. Everything else is 25. And why th we're neglected in, in that consideration. So I have it written up a little more carefully here. And I brought you pictures of the spice bush. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's really cute. So you might as well look at them. <laughs> but I do have them. <laughs> They're 
your pictures from this uh, summer. Oh, that's so many I have. <laughs> okay. I'm, oh, okay. Let's no, see if I have the second one. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, the pictures that way. Oh, the pictures that way. Oh, oh, oh. Does anybody wish anybody else wish to speak for public comment? Right. Hello, my name is Kim Jakes, and I live on Three Haplinger Lane um, in Berwick. About six years ago, my husband and I um, built our home, and the reason we chose Haplinger was because of the natural woodland setting. Um, I'm concerned with what appears to be uncontrolled growth in building in Berwick in our area and in general. Over the past 18 months, 13 homes have been built at the end of our cul-de-sac, and now they're proposing 18 apartments um, right behind us. This is further compromising, um, certainly, our privacy and why we bought into the area to begin with. We do have a wood buffer, but it's not very thick behind our home, including my neighbors and I. Um, when they start clearing and the construction of the apartments will be visible from our development. Haplinger is finally in its final stages. It's been a long 18 months and I'm finally able to use my yard um, after the construction. The last thing I want to do is to be in my side yard or on my deck looking at the back of apartment buildings. The town needs to protect the woodlands that are left on the perimeter of the town. That's what makes Berwick so appealing. Apartments really need to be kept in the downtown <coughs> and away from um, newly single family home developments. Thank you. Anyone else? How you doing? My name's uh, Ed Kenlaw. I live at One Half Inner Lane. I uh, lived there for about eight years. Uh, I don't have anything as eloquently prepared as these ladies uh, do, but uh, I think Kim summed up uh, a good portion of that, uh, as well as Sarah. Um, part of the reason that I bought into that was because of the woodland setting of it, uh, because of the beauty of the area, um, and the peace and quiet of it, and especially to raise a family. Um, it was originally supposed to be a cul-de-sac, which um, appealed to me when I bought the house. Obviously that's changed um, with the current developer uh, that has put in 13 houses at Halflinger is also the same one that's going to be putting in this uh, apartment or townhome complex and it will be directly behind my house. Uh, the last thing that I want to do is to go out on my back deck and look straight at this apartment complex and have the woods torn down. Um, I share the wetlands with Sarah on her side. Uh, I am concerned about any of the destruction of that because every year we look forward to the natural species of wildlife that are in there, frogs, uh, as well as plant life, and then also the migratory patterns of certain uh, waterfowl that come through and use that wetland as a stopover uh, for feeding. Um, the other concerns that I have is also just for what Kim had mentioned as far as the uncontrolled growth of the town as well. The school systems within Berwick are already strained as it is. The police department is already strained as it is. The fire department is already strained as it is. And now we want to add another apartment complex on there with families that don't necessarily contribute as far as a single family residence would into the school system into helping out relieve some of that burden with some of the tax revenue that might be there with it. Um, we already experience on Halflinger right now with the additional houses that are in there and the construction that's going on, uh, issues with speeding of not only of the people who have moved in down there, but also the construction, the people who are working, the contractors, and also the developer himself. Um, it's treated as a drag strip. It's a safety concern. There is concern with safety uh, on Pine Hill Road with increasing the traffic on there as well. Um, we walk our dog, we walk around in the area, and it's not something that I 100% feel comfortable doing because of already traffic concerns that we have with it. Um, again, I, if, if I haven't said it enough, I, 
absolutely do not want this uh, in there. Um, again, it's not not what I wanted when I originally bought the house. So um, destroying the natural beauty, the trees uh, in there, I think would be a disservice for the town uh, and also the state as well. So thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak with a comment? Okay. Um, I'd like to take just one brief comment. Um, we share many of your same concerns about the growth in Berwick. We talk about this quite often. Um, and, you know, one of the things that tie our hands is the comprehensive plan and the land use ordinances. And the way we control the growth in Berwick is by changing that. And the way we change that is by getting new people involved. So I would suggest some of you start getting more involved in the planning board in the comprehensive plan and you can help shape where we're going with this and then we won't have this in the future um all right we have no public hearings we have no deport, uh, reports of committees no department reports uh, we have a presentation of the town audit by Ron Smith. Good evening. I'm Ron Smith with RHR Smith and & Company. And uh, I'm here to go over your audit that we just conducted. Um, just to tell you a little bit about us, I believe we do probably well over half of all the municipalities in the state of Maine. I believe we do over half of all the school districts in the state of Maine. And uh, out of 16 counties, we do 14. So we know a lot about government and what's going on. And we actually audit two pieces of state government. So I'm here to kind of hit the highlights of Berwick. I am not going through 100 pages. Good. <laughs> I'm going to hit the highlights, just talk about that, certainly make myself available for any questions, you know, that uh, you all may have of me, of this profession, kind of of the state of the state of Maine. You know, and uh, where the state's going and really some of what we're seeing now out there for, for trends. So uh, as we still try to come out of this COVID period, um, you got our highest, you got an unmodified opinion. As of 23, it's the highest opinion we can give. So that's, that means your books are fairly stated. Lisa does a great job with your books. I'll get that right out there right now. Financially, the town of Berwick is in great financial condition. You're at probably about 75 days of your operating budget and you're unrestricted. You, last year in 22, for this year that just ended that we audited, used about a million and a half dollars for tax relief. This year, I think going into your 24 budget, it's like up to $1.7 million of tax relief. You know, so you've been pretty consistent with what you're using. So, um, uh, yeah, and at the end of the day, your fund balance last year, overall in totality, landed within $50,000 of where it did in 22. And that's largely uh, in, in, uh, in, in response to your budget coming in for revenues over what you estimated and returning some expenses, you know, back to the bottom line, you know, that weren't, uh, that weren't used. And we're typically seeing that right now, but we're also typically seeing, you know, in our audits, you know, that we've uh, done for 23 so far, which we're probably at about a population of 20% of them right now. The, the, the revenue estimates over what you projected are shrinking, and the money that's being returned for what you didn't spend for budgeted appropriations is shrinking too. So what that tells me is whatever normality is going to look like after we start coming out of COVID, we're starting to see that, you know, right now in the world of government. Good news is... The state's got over $2 billion coming into it over the next five years for infrastructure projects because of the Build Back America, again, that was actually passed in November of 21, that I believe that the president actually put the money in motion in August of 23 of this year. So you're going to gradually start seeing that. We're seeing it already through various programs at the Bond Bank, through various programs, you know, through, through various state organizations right now, you know, that are available to you know, municipalities, but you're going to start seeing a lot more and start hearing a lot more about that over, um, you know, over the next uh, next year. Um, if, if somebody were to say, hey, Ron, if you, if, you know, use your 35 years of experience and tell us what jumps out at you the most out of those 100 pages, it'd be probably, you know, a, 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 a couple of things. You know, one, I think you're light in your capital reserves. Yeah, you got about $850,000 and 
a few capital, you know, areas, you know, for like buildings and highway and things like that, you know, and I believe your highway fund has, well, I can tell you exactly how much your highway fund has, um, about $200,000 in a highway reserve. That's where we see the biggest capital need coming up over the next two to three years. And that's where we're going to start seeing a lot of funding coming into the state because our roads are in some tough shape. So, and depending where you are, which part of the state, east, west, north, south, there, some are in tougher shape than others. You know, so we're going to see a lot, you're going to start seeing a lot of infra infrastructure money for roads, a lot, of low, a lot of interest money for water, wastewater projects. You've got a water department. There's another thing that I look at and say, you know, in totality, I think your general fund's good. I mean, we got like 75 days-ish, you know, in totality, we got over 90 days of our operating budget sitting in reserve. I wouldn't say that about your water department. I'd say that one's pretty lean and mean. I don't know where you're looking at, you know, as far as like rate increases and kind of the dynamics of that. You know, I'm not sure, you know, wh uh, what, um, you know, is on the horizon. I hear a lot about development and, you know, kind of taking a look in the crystal ball and really evaluating what your game plan is for that. At the same time, you might want to coordinate that with some of the reserves that you got and certainly how that's going to affect your utility department with water because I see, you know, quite frankly, that that one's a little shy, you know, as far as financially. If you look at that, all your money's tied up in infrastructure. That's it. You've got a fund balance that really doesn't exist. It's about zero, you know, and, and everybody says, well, well, $170,000 of that's depreciation. It's a paper number. Well, that's a real number <laughs> because those pipes under the ground, your treatment plants, those type of things, it, they're not getting any younger, and it's just getting more expensive to, you know, to maintain those things. So that's another area that I think probably I would raise my hand and say, say, look at me, you know, and just kind of where does that fit in in your, in your long-term planning? So that's who I am. That's what I got, and I am all prepared to sit here and listen to what you got. <laughs> Terrific. Um, yeah, uh, on the topic of, of the uh, the water department, we do have uh, a bond. Uh, you know, it, we we are planning a, a upgrades. Upgrades. Yeah, and I see yeah. one falls off in like three years. You know, there. And usually, when one falls off, I expected to hear what you just said. Yeah. We're looking at some upgrades to yeah. kind of like we mitigate got some upgrades things. planned, engineered, that'll yeah. be built in the next uh, year or two. Are you working at your rates as well? Um, the rates, not so much. The um, the uh, we do we have, we do do we do votes for rates? No. We recently just had a we had rate study just up to up to um, this past year. Yeah. So they were effective as of July one this year. Yeah. Do, do we have another rate coming too, right? It's just that, it's just that one. Yeah. Yeah. You, usually, hand in hand, you know, you uh, when you're doing the project that you're at, when one debt falls off and it gets replaced by another piece of debt. That'd be the first thing that I'd say. Look hard in the mirror at that one, ju just to make sure. Mm -hmm. So, does anybody else have any questions for Ron? I do. Um, Thank you. <laughs> on, on page one hundred, you talk about a deficiency in internal control exists. Yeah. So Can you just there's a, that a little yeah. There's a management letter that we issued. You know, there was an issue I think with just the accounting of how you posted. You know, to like directly to some fund balance policies. We don't think that that's like the best practice. There's another letter that says that. That's what that's referring to. So let me just tell you this: that's nothing in the grand scheme of some of the problems that we see out there in the I'm, world of I'm government. I'm aware of that, but did you also in that management letter um, give recommendations? That's the recommendation we did. We'll look at the accounting practices. Look at the yeah, it's about the only one. I think Lisa, as I said, I'll start it and I'll end by this. I think she does a great job. Mm -hmm. We are. We already took care of that. The twelve thousand. Yeah. It was. It's twelve thousand dollars. The management letter concern is concerning the twelve thousand dollars that um, we transfer from the regular water department to the water tower reserve every year, and we already took care of that um, with the auditors. Yeah. Um, Answer your I think question. It was Thursday. Yeah. I got an email. Yeah. But that's what you answer your question. That's what that letter is referring to is that comment that you've already taken yeah. care of, you know, and as far as advice and practices, I'm just delivering you some of the information that we yeah. typically won't put in writing and just telling you if I was Berwick, there's a, here's a couple areas, you know, that I would look into. Okay. So. You said, you said, you know, we're light and like the, the capital in the highway department and water. What would you suggest? How much would you suggest we have in those accounts? Well, the first thing I would say is what's your plan? You know, what, what's your plan? Where are you going to be spending your money? 
you know, and, and, and how. You know, is it going to be talking economic development? You know, because with economic development, where's your capital plan fit in there? And if this money is going to be accessible to the world of government, you know, and usually these come with matching requirements, about 10%. You know, I'm just throwing a number out there. Well, we know. So if somebody <laughs> says, hey, you know, what's that magical number? Well, if, you, if you've got a road upgrade that you're going to spend, you know, for a couple hundred thousand dollars, and you're going to go get, where can you go get 80 or 90 cents on the dollar, you know, right now for, 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 for that, to spend right. on that road project, and, and, and in your road reserve, you've got like $200,000, you know, I think in there. So, so I think that you could probably eat that up in one project, but that's where I would say you're the most lightest with the infrastructure is in capital and roads specifically. Well, I believe in this, in this past budget that you just did, the way we did it was we put two hundred thousand into the road budget, yeah. and then we took like six hundred thousand from undesignated fund and put to that in there. Make well. eight hundred thousand, yeah. and in this most recent budget, we did expand yeah. what was actually in highway, yeah. right. and we're working on increasing that yeah. yearly. And, and, and I think that that's great. But as you increase, you're spending it at the same time. As fast right. as you're putting in there, you're spending it. There's no money there, you know, to go a little money. I can't say there's no money. There's not a lot of money there to go take advantage of this lifetime opportunity that's coming our way over the next three to five years in the state. And that's what I'm saying. I think that that's great foresight to move $700,000 or $900,000, whatever that was, you know, last year, and you continue to do that. But you're doing it with a purpose, to spend it and mm -hmm. to upgrade your roads. And what I'm saying is, is I think that that's a good start, but what's that road management plan? What's that going to look like, you know, in longevity? How, how much are we, could we be talking four to five million more dollars worth of road projects if we're dropping seven, nine hundred or a million, you know, dollars a year? Could we be talking that? Because if we are, you clearly don't have enough money to go, you know, and, and I'd like you to be, some of these are going to be competitive. I just want to make you as competitive as possible without having to go take from your general fund again and continue to do that, you know, and just use a little bit of, use a little bit of, planning and try to coincide it as these needs for infrastructure, roads, bridges, culverts, things like that come up for this opportunity. You're never going to see this opportunity again. We're just not. Right. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. It has well, been I'll a say. great pleasure. Any questions? Lisa, I know, is on the screen. Please. It's very uh, comprehensive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, pages. I'll tell you, here's, here's the thing. These things are they're going to be about another 15 pages longer next year. So, uh, so yeah. But if there's any questions you all may have of us, please reach out. All right, thank, thank, you. Thank, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Unfinished business downtown drain project bid award. Good up. Uh, one bid come in for this project, and I was talking talked with the contractor uh, a few different times, and with our engineer, and um, I'm recommending we move forward with this bid. Uh, the itemized um, costs, the, the predominant costs, is the cost of the materials. Um, this project, uh, the major project, is the drainage project that connects from the work that was done off Wilson Street, um, takes the stormwater up from Pine Hill, the stream that goes by the fire station property, and then goes through the edge site. Um, Great Falls Construction upsized their infrastructure, and it, this project picks up from the edge site and gets it to the Salmon Falls River. Now, just to be clear, we have we have this money is from the uh, in, was this from the infrastructure bill or was this from the bond or what was this from? Part of it, part of the funding was allocated from ARPA funds. Yes, right. okay, right. and the rest of it will come from an earmark. Okay, and um, there's a smaller project that is involved with the scope, and that's um, a smaller drainage project in front of Corner Point. There's an issue where there's it's one of the low points in town, and they have an issue where water pulls up and it's actually flooded the building a couple times. So it's um, throwing in a catch basin and help with uh, water management and <coughs> snow management as well. So fix the historical issue. And uh, when would this project uh, begin and be completed? The one in front of Corner Point uh, can be done before the end of this year. And then the major project would be contingent upon the earmark funding going in our bank account. Okay. Still waiting on the actual funds to come through. Optimistically, springtime? Optimistically, springtime. Um, 
but probably more summer, fall. Okay. Well, if anybody's been paying attention to what happened in New York last week, yeah, right. <laughs> 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 they had four feet of rainfall yeah. and business. Yeah. Um, we could easily find ourselves in one of those storms anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those once in a century things seem to be coming up more often and often, you know. Um, does anybody have any questions about this bid? Look for a motion? I am absolutely looking for a motion. I'll make a motion that we award contract to Curtis Earthworks in the amount of $955,916 for the downtown drainage project. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> All right. Town manager's report. So our lift is, um, we're actually just waiting for an emergency call phone on the lift. Um, they were trying to install one the other day and it doesn't work with our phone system, but they are aware of what it is needed. So once that, you need an emergency phone on the lift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, to go up one. If you're floor. stuck in the middle of the stairs. What are you going to do? Yeah. You can't possibly get to anybody from Clap. the top of the bottom. You can't, can't yell, huh? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you one, wouldn't have to yell. You could throw a pen know. and hit somebody. But, you know. Once that's installed, we'll be able to uh, we schedule an emergency phone. a <laughs> final inspection, and we'll, we'll finally have a lift. So that should be, be soon. Before this phone. Before this phone. I doubt it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I bet it, I, Hopefully, I hope. <laughs> um, speaking of elections, we have election November seventh, and that's for that's during a scheduled uh, select board meeting. So, recommending to reschedule the select board meeting to November eighth at six thirty. I'll Question. make a motion oh, to set the poll one out uh, to set the selectors meeting to November eighth at six thirty. I second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor. I, I do have a comment. The election. We have spread the word far and wide. There's an election on November 7th. Jeez. The word's out there. <laughs> We've been trying. People are finding it. I don't know. It depends where they look. Anybody says that. You know, they, they know there was a, a November election. I don't know those a today. town referendum. The info has uh, been on the website for months. Terry has been putting up regular slides about it. We speak about it every meeting. Um, Any, anybody that turns on any kind of you know, local news or anything hears all about what's coming up. On the yeah, <laughs> birth <laughs> election. Well, Signs no, well, should something start happened, huh? being put out okay. about vote yes or no. Patty, what's the last date for absentee or, ballots? The Thursday before the election. Okay. Unless you have a special circumstance, in which case you need to call me. Okay. Or but they can get uh, uh, absentee ballots now. Mm -hmm. They can apply for them now. Yes. They'll be going out in the mail either Thursday or Tuesday. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have 46 requests already. Really? That's good. That's good. That's good. I had a scheduling mix up. Well, I was gave me one of the wrong dates, so. Um, they're going to be here for November 8th. Okay. 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 I keep trying to schedule people for the Thursday instead of Tuesday. <laughs> um, I think planning board has enough going on right now. No. When did you, and, and you, I'm sure you told me, I just forgot, when did you reschedule Betsy? Betsy will be the 17th. The 17th? Yep. Okay. Yep. So Betsy, our HR consultant, will be here the 17th to go over changes in the personnel policy. I uh, touched base with Greg from Knowles Industrial. Um, they can get, they can't get to the brickwork until the springtime. They possibly can do the steps, but I just want to make sure that they're either well before the election or after, so that might end up pushing it to the springtime. And I'm still waiting on an updated budget, so more to come on that. I can make the announcement: the Town of Berwick was awarded a $50,000 grant, a community resilient grant resilience grant 
half will go to start a community garden and the other half will go toward an open space plan. So part of this open space plan, um, with every building permit that comes in, we collect a fee for impact fees. We have just under $100,000 in that fund now. With an open space plan, it will work to prioritize um, areas for the town to acquire. The town also has um, partnership capabilities with the land trust. Maybe it's just match funds and part of bigger grants to preserve farmlands, natural habitats, uh, and things of that nature. So much more to come on that. Uh, last thing I have is um, Happy to report Oak oh, Pine Hill Road South has been paved. Uh, Baby Scott is working on Pine Hill Road right now. And after that will be New Dam Road. Libby Scott also is doing our courts at Memorial Field. So that will be after New Dam Road. Right now that's scheduled for the end of October, beginning of November. So depending on the weather, um, we may just do a base coat for the basketball and tennis slash pickleball court and hold off till spring, just to make sure that the final coat is smooth and put down. Will the base coat be able to be sustainable over a winter? Yeah, I don't, sure. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just hate to see them pave it once and then yeah. Yeah. have yeah. to go yeah. towards yeah. the spring. Yeah. No, it, 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 they compact the, the base and put, okay. put a good base coat on it, should be no problem. Yeah. And depending on weather, if it's, if it's cold, we'll just wait, but if it's warm, we'll do the final coat. Um, reached out to the playground company today, hope, hoping for an update, but we certainly will have an update for the next meeting. We're ready to go, just waiting on the playground company. That completes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the town manager? Thank you, James. All right. Psych board communications. I have a couple letters from Comcast detailing some channel changes, package changes, um, nothing incredibly dire. Um, the um, approval of counts payable. All right. I have a payroll warrant number 20 from September 28th, 2023, in the amount of $82,337.67. I have an accounts payable warrant number 21 from September 28, 2023, in the amount of $185,731.51. And I have a payroll warrant number 22 from October 5th in the amount of $81,768.06. I make the motion that we pay our bills. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. Uh, new business. Auto graveyard annual permits. So these three have been inspected by code without issue. They've all returned their application and permit fee to me, so we're ready to approve them. And I'll get those up to the state. Uh, do we need to do them individually? or No, you can do one. Do them as one? Sure. Does anybody have any questions about these uh, permits? No, these are all long-term renewals, right? Right, it's the one right down there, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. I know what you're right. I'll make a motion that we award graveyard permits to Southern New Hampshire Hydroelectric Development Corporation, Berwick Iron and Metal Recycling, Inc., and Heavy Truck Sales. Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> they continue. All right. Uh, set the hearing date for no the November 7th town meeting election. Town yep. clerk recommends. Sorry, no, I thought you read town referendum yep. election. It was a copy paste thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it in a minute. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I will make the motion that we set the uh, referendum date for November 7th, 2023. As October 17th. Wait, what? I'm confused. It's the public hearing. The board. public hearing. You're right. At your meeting on October 17th. 
Too many, too many hearings, too many elections, too many setting the dates. Yes. I, I move that we set the public hearing date for the November 7th referendum for October 17th, 2023. Second the motion. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank okay. you. I will also make the motion that we set the polling hours for the November 7th referendum to 8, p. Uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Second. Second. Go ahead. Nope. Yeah, Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Bet you're happy we stopped doing 6 a.m., right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And well, you didn't want those extra 10 ballots? <laughs> no. Hey, I was one of those. I used to show up at 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. No quick lane deeds, no abatements. Second public comment. Does anybody else wish to continue speaking on the subject? Yes. So I'm still Sarah Ellis from 98 Old Pine Hill Thank Road. You. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was mentioning three, four, con four um, concerns. The third concern I'll drop, I'll, I'll pass by. It was about the Japanese knotweed that's being spread probably by his truck going back and forth a lot and not much on the property. So that's one concern. But the most important concern that I would like to talk about is the fourth one, which is the potential harm to a butter's wetland. The butter's being me and the Kinlaw family here. Um, so if you refer to figure five on page 10, um, this is a close up of the uh, proposed development. Um, lot one is where the single family would go. Lot two is where those three buildings would go. And I've circled in red our shared wetland, which is right below uh, below lot one. It is lower than these two these two lots. And um, as mentioned, uh, the land is very wet, but there's also a wetland that they're planning to fill in. I've circled, I've, I've highlighted that in yellow. That's, if you add that up, it's almost almost 13,000 square feet, but they're allowed to do that technically. Um, sorry, 13,000 or 13? 13? Yeah, 1,272 square feet. Yeah, 1,300. If they, that's one thing that they're planning to do. But the other thing is they are planning to. Uh, Divert a change a culvert, divert a stream away to another wetland, and they do have a stormwater management plan about that. That takes this the other yellow thing takes it. It'll the stream will be diverted and contained and sent to a wetland that they're very aware of. What is never mentioned in any of the plans is the our our small our wetland. Um, so the, I'm concerned that the drainage of the, the filling of the wetland, the diversion of the stream. And also, they're so wet, there's going to be tons of fill going in. I, I have no idea how much, but if they do that, there'll be lots of other fill. And I'm concerned that we're going to lose our wetland. Our wetland has irises, as Ed mentioned, frogs, spring peepers, all sorts of stuff. And although they, there's the opinion of civil engineers that it's not going to affect the abutters, I don't see any concern for this wetland. So... If they're going to, before they do this, there must be a study, and I think it would be being main DEP that would do the study on how it would affect our wetland. Um, so that's that's the, the the final point I really wanted to make that that they don't have a right to affect the butters wetlands, and I don't think that they've considered this in the plan. Um, we will, I will immediately uh, email Patricia with this document so that you can all have it. We will be presenting at the. At the other, at the planning board on Thursday, a version of this. We were there at the last one, but it is kind of awkward that the developer is on the planning board. Um, he does recuse himself, but just stands aside. Um, so it was a welcome this opportunity to speak with other people about this development. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you thank for you. coming down. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Lorraine Cooley, I'm 98 Old Pine Hill Road, and I guess I just, I, it's more of a question. Um, I just don't, I, I don't know if the select board can respond to what we're bringing up, or like, we don't really know what to do. Like, we don't know if there's any way to, to, to get, you know, Maine DEP to come do a survey or the, the people to go look for spice bush, and we don't know how to stop the planning board. They, they're 
they, they, well, I understand, we have learned that they have, they really can't stop anything. They can just put conditions on it, but we don't, that, we are hoping that you might, uh, might be able to, to do something, but I, I don't have a sense of what you can and cannot do. I don't know if you can speak to that or not. Uh, well, the planning board and us, uh, we are limited by what's I already in the land use ordinances. We can't, you know, we have we have a set rules of what can and can't be done in town and different sections of the town with different requirements. And we can't, you know, make new rules when someone comes up with something that's within the rules that we might not like. Um, in terms of what you can do, um, you're doing it. You're Talk, you're going to the planning board, you're, you're expressing your concerns, you're bringing it up to them, bringing your concerns up to Maine DEP. Those are the people that if anything could be changed or stopped or altered, they're the people that can do it best short of the actual developers themselves. I mean, I don't know if you've reached out to them with your concerns directly, but you can always reach out to them and tell them your concerns. Um, and sometimes they will change their plan based on what you're saying, you know. Uh, if not, just to, you know, make you happy and make the community happy. Most developers don't want to come in and annoy everybody, but, you know, some do. But as long as they're doing it within the rules of the land use ordinance, there's nothing that we can do legally to just outright stop them or force them to change. Um, but, you know, and every year we try to update the land use ordinances, and if you have opinions about that, there's meetings all year round that you can come to and give your opinions about and shape the policy that the town runs on. So that's that's what I could uh, say to that subject. I mean, you can request on your own to get an additional study done by the Maine Wildlife Inland Fisheries, but just, I mean, I would, I would start by making a phone call there, and if they do a study, though, they're going to be looking for you to pay for that study. Um, so be just be prepared for that but they're the best people if you're looking for a study they wrote this so if you're questioning this this is who you should be questioning okay. because the developer can't move unless they get these letters so it starts here anyone else for a second public comment all right I will close second public comment we have no executive session does anybody else have any other business non-agenda items to bring up I just wondered, you had mentioned um, some wetland money that would be available. Could that be for something like this later down the road, or if they needed something to change? Or? Wetland money? Yeah, did you say there was a, I forgot what you had just said. Half of it would be for wetland Open spaces. Uh, Open spaces. Uh, oh. Sustainability. Yes. That, that would be for purchasing it and preserving uh, it in uh, perpetuity, right. yeah. yeah. In, yeah, it would be in the future identifying sites that okay. did, did have endangered species or species of special concern. That would be part of that priority matrix to go yeah. in there and say, hey, we know you have an endangered species there. And, then and purchase the land. Can, can yeah. we as a town yeah. purchase but it, but it also exactly is, so. you know, you know, it's the, 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 the real value of the land as well, you know, and we can't make them sell it to us either. Right, so. right. It's... It's it's a voluntary program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when we bought the land to expand the field, you know, we had to wait for that to come onto the market, and that took forever. Right. <laughs> and then we had to haggle them down too because they wanted a lot more money than we were willing to pay for that. Um, yeah, um, we have an election November seventh. If you haven't heard, <laughs> please please be aware. We're voting on important things. Please show up. Uh, or get your absentee ballot. Patty's in the office. Um, we're actually voting on portions of the land use ordinances. Yes, we're voting yeah. on the <laughs> <absolutely laughs> land use ordinances and things like that. The stuff does come up. It is important. It's on the ballot. Um, so. Yeah. I don't have anything else. Anybody else? Motion <coughs> to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Good night.